He is risen. Three small words that brought the collective pace of humanity to an absolute standstill. He is risen. Three words that shattered prisons. Words that shook the earth's foundations. Words that transformed a sense of utter despair into cries of pure joy and ecstasy. Echoes of history's greatest triumph that still shape our reality. Even today, we're assaulted by constant distraction, countless sources waging war for our attention, yet three words pierce the noise. In our hunger for validation, our desperate pleas for love and attention, three words calm our anxiety. In a universe spinning at breakneck speed, its inhabitants locked in an existential crisis, three words proclaim the purpose of our existence. He is risen. Lay hold of this truth and embrace the peace within. Yesterday, fear reigned in our hearts. Yesterday, we sat in crippling darkness. Yesterday, we suffered abuse and all the accusations of a broken world. But today, our king, our healer, our defender is risen. And this reality doesn't merely accompany us on a meaningless journey. This changes everything. For you see, if he is risen, then all other pursuits become secondary. All of our failures become insignificant. All criticisms and condemnations become irrelevant. There is only his word, his mission, and his infinite, unconditional love for you. Because he is risen, we look to tomorrow. Tomorrow, we will stop defining our worth through status and social media. Tomorrow, we will together build an everlasting kingdom. Tomorrow and every day after, we will dance in the radiance of a redeeming savior who crushed death and set us free. There is nothing that Jesus cannot overcome. know this because he lives. We know this because he is risen. Well, good morning, harvest time. Good morning. I'm going to try something, see if we can do it. He is risen. I love that. Let's do it one more time. He is risen. Oh, amen. Well, I'm so glad that you're here with us on this Easter Sunday. Um, it is a very special Sunday for us, and so we are so excited because the, um, I'm going to give you the, the end. Um, the, the tomb is empty, and that's why we're, that's why we're excited. And so um, if, if you're a guest with us this morning, thank you for coming. Thank you for spending some of your Sunday with us. Um, we have a, a, just a gift. And so if you're joining with us online, um, you can go to the htcfamily.org slash connect. And we got a special gift for you. Otherwise, if you're on campus with us this morning, um, myself or one of the other VIP team, we'll be at the back uh, at the end of the service. We, we just want to get to know you and, and get the, uh, this. Um, it's a great coffee mug or soup mug, whatever you need it to be. Um, so just our way of saying thank you and for spending some of your Sunday with us. In um, just a few moments, uh, Nathan and the team are going to lead us in vocal worship. So just uh, pr pr get yourself ready. And so would you stand with me? And so if you're watching online, would you put yourself in a posture to experience God? And so I want to just encourage us that we're, we're about to enter into a time of vocally worshiping our, our, our Savior. And um, the thought hit me is that Friday was a, a, was a day where it seemed like everything was dark, that, that the enemy had won, that death was gonna reign, that um, hopes and dreams were gonna be stuck on a cross. But Sunday hadn't happened, it was about to. And that's why today um, the, the tomb is empty. Death couldn't hold him, the grave couldn't contain him. Hell wasn't gonna be enough. And so, that, so the fact that our Savior conquered it all 
that today we're free because of what he did on the cross. And so we're worshiping a risen Savior. And so would you just lift your hands with mine? Jesus, we're so thankful for what you did on the cross, but God, it didn't stop there. God, that for three days, you were taking back ground that the enemy had taken. And so Jesus, we just thank you that you destroyed hell, you destroyed death in the grave. And so God, that is why we worship you. God, that you righted the wrongs and that today, God, we're worshiping a king who's willing to do it all that there is a king, God, and that's why, we're, that's why we worship you, Jesus, in your wonderful name. Amen.
church, are you ready to celebrate the risen Christ this morning? He's alive and he's in our midst. He's here this morning. Would you put your hands together? Let's celebrate the King. I was buried beneath my shame.
praise today. Can we just lift him up? We thank him for what he's done in our lives, in our family, in our, in our city, in our nation. We just give you praise and honor today, God. We love you. We're going to continue worshiping God. I want to encourage you, wherever your passion is, wherever your heart is, it will get your time, it will get your energy and your resources. Because that, that's, just, that's just how we're wired. That's our DNA. And I want to encourage us as a church that let's, our heart, we claim that our heart is with Him. So that means our time, our energy, and our resource is, is, is His. And so we're going to bring Him back what's already His anyway. And we're going to give back our tithes and bring it to Him. So we're going to, as we give, you can give online, you can give, there's a, a buckets in the back. And I just want to say a blessing as you give. In Malachi uh, chapter 3, it talks about bringing uh, the tithes to the storehouse. And so if you need to, this would be a time to kind of get your, your offering, your tithe ready. You can give that in the back. Let me say a blessing as you give. Jesus, as a church, we just say thank you. And God, we thank you for showing us what generosity looks like because you gave up heaven. You left heaven. And God, you gave your son. And so Jesus, we, we get the heart of what generosity looks like by giving you the most valuable thing. And as humans, God, the most valuable thing is our time, our energy, and our resource. And we give it back to you. And we bring it back to you because it's yours already. And so God, we're not trying to build a kingdom that is harvest time. We're trying to advance the kingdom of God. And what that looks like is it means the pulling down of strongholds. What that looks like is that the saving of many souls. What that looks like is that the addicted to be free, that change are shattered. And so, God, that's what we're about, and that's why we give, and that's why we're bringing it back to you anyway, God. And we just thank you, God, that we're doing it as a jo with a joyful heart, God, in your wonderful name. Amen. Thank you for bringing and giving that offering today. Church, this morning. As we're singing about coming out of this grave and we're singing about this, our story as believers, I just feel this morning that maybe you're here and that's not your story yet. Maybe you're in a place of darkness. Maybe you're in a place of uncertainty, depression, death. Maybe you've never given your life to this risen Christ. You've never experienced that before. And I just feel the Holy Spirit putting out of my heart this morning for you, for me to share this for you, that the Lord is calling you out of that grave. He's calling you out of that grave this morning. The Lord is calling you out this morning. He's calling you out in the best way. The scripture says that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And this morning, it might be your morning. Maybe you've never done that. This could be your morning. And so this next song, we're going to be singing and we're going to be prophesying over you all the voice of the Lord, the sound of God waking you up. There's a spiritual awakening coming to this nation and to this world like you've never seen before. And this song is a prophetic song from the heart of the Lord to wake up, to wake up from your sleep.
pray with you, God, that there would be life. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We have a key verse here at harvest time, John 10, 10. And it's literally Jesus said, I have come that you would experience real and eternal life. The word is zoe, bubbling over, cup overflowing, life. So I speak over you, life. Life. We got to do a little part of that song. I don't even know where to jump in. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's this story in Acts where Jesus Christ himself came and talked to Paul. His name was known as Saul at that time. He literally talked to Paul. And Paul had this conversation with him. But the interesting thing there is he had a conversation and everybody else only heard thunder. So we're yelling live and stuff. There could be a clatter that I'm not feeling anything or doing anything. And it's not an emotional. We're not asking you to feel things. But I'm going to pray, God, open our ears that we don't just hear thunder. That God would speak to your situation this morning. God, that the resurrection of Jesus Christ would come alive. And people would experience you like they did when you talk to Paul. God, we don't want to be people that just hear thunder. God, we want to hear you. God, I speak over them live. As we just vocally sing this, Lord, may you do what only you can do. Go ahead.
our God good? In 2 Kings chapter 13, starting in verse 20, it says this, then Elisha died and was buried. Elisha was the prophet of God. Starting off really positive. And it says this, groups of Moabite raiders used to invade the land, this is Israel, the land each spring. Once when some Israelites were burying a man, they spied a band of these raiders. So they hastily threw the corpse into the tomb of Elisha and fled. And I just imagine, you don't, you're not going to bury somebody who you don't care about. You're not just going to be literally carrying a dead body of somebody you don't know. These are somebody, this is somebody's friend. This is somebody's brother. This is somebody's son. This is somebody that these, these people cared about. It, this, this man had dreams. He had hopes. He had future. And yet, you, we find this guy that he's dead. And he's at the place where he's about to be buried. And he's just thrown into this pit. He's thrown into this, gr this grave. But as soon as the body touched Elisha's bones, the dead man received, revived, and jumped to his feet. And I don't know where you find yourself this morning. As Nathan said, you maybe feel like this dead man this morning. You maybe feel like your dreams are there. You may feel like that your that prodigal is there. You may feel like your hope is there. You may feel like you're at the end of your rope and that you're just clinging on. You got nothing left. But I want to encourage you that more than we don't need a prophet's bones, what we need today is a touch from the risen Savior. And so I want to encourage you that as today is your day, that God has marked you, that God has seen you, and he's not disappointed with you today, that he's like, hey, son, hey, daughter, I got you this morning, and you, one touch from me is enough. That's all you need is one touch. And so today is your day, and we're going to sing that. Can we just sing that, and let's just go back into this? I don't, we're not pop in circumstance, but I believe that God is doing something this morning. And let's go into it, and we're going to continue see, touching the fray. It just takes one touch from him, and it changes everything. And that's what we need today. Let's just go after him just a little bit more. Let's just stir it up. Let's, pr let's sing it for our prodigal. Let's sing it over our lives. Let's sing it over our marriages. Let's sing it over our, the things, those dead things in our lives that need a touch today. And let's just go after him, because I hear some dry bones rattling. I hear things moving. And let's go after him today. Amen. Our God is able to save. God, I thank you that you are a God that touches the dead things and they come into life again. And God, we're, for everybody on campus and everybody watching online, I thank you, Jesus, that you're a God that does, still is doing the impossible. And God, I thank you that you are breaking addictions even right now. God, I thank you for those that are addicted to prescription pills. God, I thank you you're breaking that right now. Jesus, I thank you that you are a God that has searched our hearts, and yet you still found it worthy on a Friday to, to, to give it all on a cross. 
and that God, you hang, you hung there for us. Jesus, that the, the, you, the physical torment, it was terrible, but God, we can't even wrap our mind about the fact that you had to become our sin. You had to become my worst day. You had to become the most vile thing that I've ever done. And yet you took it all. And that you, you became our death. You became our sentence. And yet on the third day, there's hope. There's a hope today. And so Jesus, I just thank you, God, that you are waking up your church. That you are waking up me. You're waking up harvest time, Jesus, to the reality of your kingdom today. And so Jesus, as we continue moving forward, God, I thank you that there will be people who give their hearts to you today, Jesus, for the first time. That there will be those who are coming back to the fray today, Jesus, that have, that have gone astray today. And because that's who you are. And so, God, we are, you are searching our hearts even right now, God. And, Lord, we just pray. If there's anything dead in us, would you touch those dead things? God, if we've been touching dead things, God, would we, would we repent of those things, God, and we just give it to you? And you are a God that makes the dead things come alive. And so we just thank you for that in your wonderful name. Church, you can, would you just pray for 30 seconds? Would you just pray? And just pray for those things in your own life. Is there anything that's dead that you know that you need a touch from heaven today? Can we just give our God a hand clap this morning? Isn't he amazing? Isn't he great? Let's, man, our God is so good. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, team, for leading us. Welcome to harvest time. We're so glad you're here. I was talking to some other pastor friends of mine, and they said, who's going to come this week? And I said, I don't know, but it's going to be way better than last year. Last year, we had seven of us here. So thank you. Exponential growth. We are so glad that you came. My name is Pastor Kim, as I said. Uh, if this is your first time here, welcome. If you've been coming for a while and my wife and I still have not met you, we would love to meet you in the back here. Uh, we just have a little connection place, as Pastor Kyle said at the beginning, just a gift as an appreciation. Please stop and see us. Uh, we have a number of things going on. You can find those on our website. But one important thing is just being able to connect, but would be like a, a next step. And we have something called life groups. Life groups are a way just to meet other people. And we have a wide variety of life groups. Some of them are finding the best burger in town. And people, we just are going from burger place to burger place and eating chicken. <laughs> if you're not a burger man, you know, whatever. <laughs> One person came and had a salad. I'm like, that's just wrong. No, they didn't really do that. <laughs> so a burger, uh, we have a knitting group. People learn how to knit, uh, bowling, just different ways to connect. And another thing that we have is uh, Bible studies, uh, just a little bit deeper connection that my wife is coming up at this time because we're always starting new Bible studies too. And she would like to share. This is Jenny. Yes. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Yes, um, there are awesome women's Bible studies that have been going on for a while, but what I'm announcing is a new one. It's going to start it's six weeks. It's going to start Friday morning, 930 to 11. April 16th is the starting date. It's um, actually Lisa Turkust, if I pronounced her name correctly, uh, yeah, trustworthy. And it's all about trusting God in the hard times. And the interesting thing about this Bible study, I had seen it like, 
uh, f before pre-COVID and thought, oh, I had it tucked away. And then Nicole Vinson, passionate young woman for God, said, oh, I went through this great Bible study. So um, her and I together are going to do this study, and everybody's welcome. As I said, it's only six weeks long, Friday mornings, whoever can come. So we're excited Starting about Starting on? Friday, April 16th, from 9.30 to 11, we're going to go. Excellent. Thank you so much. If you are in the fifth through eighth grade, fifth through eighth grade, we have a class that meets first and third Sundays of every month. It's called Next Gen. And so Pastor Kyle and Carly are going out right now. Feel free to meet them in the back. I always say follow them out, but just meet them back there and feel free to go. Let's just pray one more time. God, open up our hearts and minds. Just receive something from you, we ask. Your incredible name. Amen. I want to read you something. We're, we're going to jump to three stories, actually, this morning. And you're going to say, well, Resurrection Sunday, isn't there a story? There is a story. <laughs> but we're going to come at it from three different angles that we would understand today. Uh, the first one is in the book of Revelation. Revelation. And I'm, I'm just going to skim one thought there. I'm not diving deep in. People always ask me, so who do you think the seventh horn on the fourth beast was? I don't know. Cuba. Who knows? <laughs> you know, I, I really don't know. <laughs> and so we're just going to look at this. And this is what, the results of the resurrection. And there's this scroll. It starts with chapter 5. There's this scroll. Interesting thing there, uh, Daniel, a prophet, probably about 500, maybe almost 600 years before this was written, Daniel saw what was going to happen at the end of time. And God told him that the way they wrote was like a, in a scroll. God told him to seal up the scroll. It was made for a different time, okay? That, that's all we need to know. So it's been sealed since Daniel. And now Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And we call this the last days because Jesus opened the scroll. And this verse 2, I saw a strong angel who shouted, Who is worthy to break the seals on this scroll and open it? But no one in heaven or on earth was or under the earth, was able to open the scroll and read it. And then John started to cry. He said, I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and read it. But one of the 24 elders said to me, stop weeping. Look, I love this. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, has won the victory. People, that's what we celebrate on Easter. Jesus Christ has won the the victory, and one of his names is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. In other words, start the end. When Jesus died on the cross, he defeated death, hell, and the grave. But those things are still happening today. There's still death, there's still the grave. And there's hell, and you're like, well, how did he defeat him if these things are there? It, it, it's an opening of the scroll. And it's going to culminate in something greater. And so they said, the lion of the tribe of Judah has done this. And I love the next line. And then John turned, and he saw a lamb that looked like it was slain. Some see him as a lion. Some see him as the lamb, depending on how you know him. And how many know that we can have different ways people see us? You, you're seeing me as Pastor Kim. I remember one time, one of my daughters called me that, Pastor Kim. I like, dude, you don't call me Pastor Kim. Guess what? You're one of the two people in the whole world that can call me dad. How many know that doesn't change who I am, but it changes how you relate to me? <laughs> right? So he's the lion of the tribe of Judah and the lamb that was slain. I am a firm believer that the things that are in the Bible repeat themselves and every time they repeat themselves, there's a greater intensity. 
When you read the Old Testament, it's pointing to Jesus Christ coming. When you read the New Testament, it's pointing to a time when we will reign and rule with him. And there's different ways that God tries to reveal that to us. Uh, For example, one of them would be way back in Genesis chapter 22. There's this man named Abraham, and he's been praying for a son for years and years. And when he's a hundred years old, God does this miracle. He's a hundred, his wife is 90, and they have a child. And this child grows. We don't know. He's probably about 30, 25, 30 at this time. And God lays on his heart, I want you to bring him to this mountain. I want you to walk to this mountain. And so they start setting out on a 3 j journey. And the Bible says, He was walking, and literally Abraham saw the place. He didn't know where he was supposed to go, and there was some revelation that came to Abraham, and he knew this is the place. And look what happens. It said that he went to his son. Verse 6 of Genesis 22, So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders, Well, he himself carried the fire and the knife, and the two of them walked together. So we have the son carrying the wood up this hill. Put that in your mind for a second. The son carrying the wood up the hill because he's going to be killed on that hill. And then when they're up there, standing there, verse 13 says this, that Abraham's about to kill him, and the Lord stops him. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by his horns on a thicket. So he placed the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham named the place Jehovah-Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. Interesting thing. Well, why read that story? What's it talking about? History tells us that Abraham went on a three-day journey with his son to obey God. In some revelation, he saw a hill where he was supposed to do this. And history tells us that's the same hill that Jesus was crucified on. And his son carried the wood up the hill. Jesus carried the wood up the hill. Isaac was going to die, and God says, I'm going to bring an alternative sacrifice so Isaac doesn't have to die. How many know that's what happened for us? Jesus took on a penalty that we deserved. So what I'm trying to say here is there's little pictures that are pointing to Jesus' death. People experience it, and it's pointing to that we would be able to understand it. I want to share with you another one. This one is actually in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel Daniel chapter 6 talks about Daniel and the lion's den. The Bible says Daniel was a man of incredible integrity. In fact, Daniel is the only person in the Old Testament that is written about that not one fault is found in him. He, he never did anything wrong. How many think that's incredible? But then you got to remember he wrote Daniel. So he may have left out some points. <laughs> I don't think I'll mention that one. <laughs> but he wrote, Daniel, man of incredible integrity. Now I'm going to share with you some of the things that happen with Daniel. And knowing the crucifixion story of Jesus Christ, I want you to put something together here. Daniel was elevated to the second person in the kingdom just underneath the king. And the religious people around him started to get jealous, verse 4. And in that jealousy, they tried to find some fault with him, and no matter how they dug in, no matter what questions they fired at him, they were not able to find any fault with Daniel. So in the end, the only thing that they could really come up with is a weak religious charge, that Daniel prays for Jerusalem. And if we can do something about that, what's the Bible say? That when Jesus was walking toward Jerusalem, he got to a hill overlooking it before he went down on Palm Sunday. And the Bible says he broke down weeping and crying, praying, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I want to bring you in. Daniel was willing to risk his life in the lion's den 
because he wanted to see Jerusalem restored after 70 years of being destroyed and Jesus praying for the peace of Jerusalem. So what did these religious leaders that found a religious charge do? They brought this weak religious charge and Daniel to a weak king. A weak king that didn't want to kill him and was looking for another way to get him free, but eventually that weak kin, king caved and sent Daniel to a lion's den. Are you starting to see a few links here? Then the Bible said, they threw him into this cave and put a huge rock over the entrance of the cave and the king sealed it with his seal that nobody can move the rock. And then the Bible says early the next morning, now this isn't perfect, but early the next morning, the king himself went there and opened up the rock and he asked, are you alive? And the Bible says, Daniel cried out, yes, I'm alive. And I love this. He said, the angel of the Lord was with me. What did Mary see when she went to the tomb? An angel standing there with a rock. And he said, you know what the angel did? He spared my life. He spared my life. What happened to Jesus? You will not die. Basically, Daniel should have been dead, but he was alive. What happened with Jesus Christ? He was dead, but now he's alive. So there's these things happening there. Why share these stories? What is it just to share little stories? No, people, I believe that these things are still happening today. The Old Testament was all pointing to Jesus Christ coming, dying for us, and raising again so that when the event happened, we'd be able to look and say, yes, this isn't an accident little thing. God was pointing toward this event, trying to bring us to this event. Now, we're looking back at the resurrection, but by looking back, God also wants us to look ahead because I believe the things that are happening in our life today are pointing us to a time when we're going to live forever with him in heaven. The same thing that God did in the Old Testament pointing to Jesus, I believe he's doing now to point to when we're going to reign and rule with him. Let me give you a couple of these. This is the result of the resurrection, things that were foreshadowed by the resurrection. This is what God said. The spirit who raised Christ from the dead now dwells in you if you have a relationship with Jesus. It's amazing how these truths that are so powerful, so awesome, beyond, beyond comprehension, we just, yeah, I'm the temple of God. He lives in me. The spirit that raised Christ from the dead now lives in you. Think about that for a moment. Shattered death, hell, and the grave in one instance now is alive in you. Do you think there's any stronghold in your life that he can't shatter, <laughs> that he can't bring? The Bible says that this Holy Spirit is a deposit guaranteeing that we have an inheritance. Everything that you experience with God is just a small taste of what we're going to experience someday when we see him. Another one. The first Adam gave us a physical life and we all come from him, but the second Adam, Jesus Christ, gives us a life-giving spirit that dwells us. Not only does the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the Bible says a life-giving spirit is in us. Uh, the word for life-giving is zoe, overflowing life, vitality. God wants to give us vitality. It's amazing how many people I see that have a relationship with God and the vitality doesn't seem to be there. People, we got to cry out, God, this is a promise. It's just a small taste of what's going to be mine someday. But God, I need Zoe in my life. I need vitality in my life. Another one. 
The Bible says in 1 John 3, 2, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. We're, we're sitting here, dry bones, come alive, rattle, whatever, and maybe you felt something, maybe you didn't. That's not what's really important, but you know what the Bible says? Whatever little glimpse of how you see God today, whether it's 100% faith or there were just times that you knew it was real, the Bible said that's just small because someday we're going to see him face to face. Can you imagine that? The Bible says those that are not in relationship, when they see him face to face, they are going to cry out, I'd rather have a mountain pick up and fall on me than have to look at that. And yet we are his children, and we're going to see him face to face. Is that not radically different? Some people are going to be crying for rocks, and we're going to be sitting there, Dad, it is good to see you. <laughs> what a day. What a day. Just a small deposit guaranteeing. Look at this. We will no longer grieve over death as those that have no hope. People, there, there is a grieving that happens. But we got to realize death is temporary because there's a hope. I remember Billy Graham talking before he passed away. He said, if someone says about my funeral... He says, here's Billy Graham. He is now dead. He said, don't believe him for a second. He said, I'm more alive than I've ever been in my life. That's a whole people. There's a grieving at death. There's a grieving at death, but it is a temporary thing because we have a hope. We do not grieve as those that have no hope. These are deposits guaranteeing. What I'm trying to share with you people, we are headed somewhere. We are headed somewhere. There's a hope in front of us. The same way Daniel in the lion's den was pointing to Jesus. God is giving us these things and we miss them. I don't think any of the disciples were sitting there on Saturday between Good Friday and Easter on Saturday sitting there going, man, that Daniel story. You don't think Jesus lived that whole thing? You think? I don't think they put that piece together. And just like that, I think we miss so much of what's happening, and we need our understanding opened up that there is something happening because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, yet we live clueless, overwhelmed by things that are happening around us. You know what we need today? We need mercy and grace. God, show us who we are in you. Show us who we're going to be in you. Acts chapter 17, Paul is talking to some people in Athens. He says this in verse 30. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times. But now, we can't live in ignorance anymore, people. Before the resurrection, there was a possibility for ignorance. But now, he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and to turn to him for he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed, and he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. So we can sit here and say, wow, the resurrection, and maybe a little tear in our eyes and beautiful clothes. Man, you guys all look wonderful today. It's, it is what it is. But you know why Jesus rose? Because God is going to have a day of judgment. In the past, we were able to be ignorant. But now God has raised him up. And he said he proved who he was by raising this one from the dead. These men tried to destroy Daniel. And when the king brought Daniel out, the Bible said, this is pretty disgusting. The Bible says he took those men that tried to destroy Daniel and he threw them to those lions. You know what the Bible says? They jumped up and crushed those people before they hit the ground. How many know that's pretty fast? Before someone would fall and hit the ground, they're dead. Whoa. The same lion that spared Daniel crushed their enemies. People, you have enemies against you today. And I'm not promising you come to Jesus, those enemies are all going to disappear because it is an intensity like I've never seen before. There, there, there is a battle going on like never before. I mentioned it earlier. Some of us understand the battle and some is just a thunder of everything going on around them. But there is a battle going around us. 
And a relationship with Jesus does not stop that battle. But he will pull us through to a destiny where we will live with him forever and ever and ever. That's the promise. That his spirit will give you life in the middle of whatever we're going through. And the Bible says it is pointing to that fact. John, the verse I read, read at the very beginning. He looked up and saw a lamb that was slain. Well, heaven saw a lion of Judah. Acts 17 says we can't be ignorant about this. People, we are going to stand in front of Jesus Christ, every one of us. And you will see him as a lion of Judah. <laughs> They'll have to bring judgment or you'll see him the lamb that was slain for you to take your place. And the greatest thing I can tell you today is that we need to make a choice. We need to make a choice. I will tell you this, this choice does not mean get your act together. I'm in an eternal pursuit of getting my act together. <laughs> and sometimes it even lasts till Monday before I fall flat on my face again. I heard one man say it like this. He said, if you want to take a shower, you don't just clean yourself up first. You just jump in and let the shower do its work. Do not try to clean up your life first. Let Jesus do the work. Let him do the work. Let him change you. So what do we have to do? The Bible says our sin has separated us from God. Our sin has separated us from God. We have to acknowledge that I'm headed in a direction not pleasing to God. We have to acknowledge it. We have to quit blaming other people for every problem. We have to acknowledge that. And then the Bible says we have to turn. How do you turn? God, what you did on the cross is the only thing that can change me. And then we have to accept what he is doing today is just headed towards something greater. If that's you today, it's an easy prayer, but it's a life-changing thing. Whatever words you have, just repeat after me. God, I need you. Whatever, I need you. Forgive me. I am headed in a different direction. Father God, I'm asking that you would deliver me from my own habits, my own junk, whatever words, just whatever. Jesus, come in. Amen. We have a book. It's called Fresh Start. If you're watching online, you can text it. We'll give you a Kindle copy of it. Otherwise, they're in the hallway there. Pick up a book. You're not joining Harvest Time. We have Bibles out there. Grab a book. It'll tell you what this whole story I've been sharing. People, the Old Testament has stories pointing to the resurrection. And from the resurrection, everything happening, pointing us to an eternity with him. Because God wants to live with us forever and ever and ever. That blows my mind. Why would you want that? But he wants it. You can know him as the lamb that was slain today. We're going to vocal worship just one more time. And I'm going to come back and give you a blessing. But just know God's love and grace for you this morning.
your family and your children and their children and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children.
Same Christ who rose from the dead, that spirit lives in you. Whether you started this relationship four minutes ago or 40 years ago, <laughs> his favor's upon you, church. His favor's upon you. I break off every lie of unworthiness. I break that off you. That you got to do better. I break that off. And you are know you are a child of God. Destined for an eternity. <laughs> Praise God. We're just going to continue playing it. They gave the blessing. I don't need to give a blessing again. My wife and I would love to meet you in the back. Thank you for joining us. If you want to sign up for one of the life groups, there's a table back there. Make sure to pick up a book or a Bible. Thank you for joining us. Go ahead, guys. Harvest Time Church, thank you for joining us this morning online. We consider it a privilege to be able to come into your house and just be a part of your lives. We want you to know that we consider something more important than just watching us. We want to be able to connect with you. And I just have a couple challenges for you. Number one is if you haven't filled out a connect card, we have a link down below that you could do that. We'd love to get to know who you are. Number two is we consider you part of the church family. And so if you have prayer requests, we want to pray for you. And if you would text us your prayer request at 715-834-4078, we would love to pray with you. And lastly, would you help us get the word out? Would you host a watch party or encourage other people to watch as we just spread the good news of Jesus Christ? Again, thank you for joining us this morning. Have a great day.